Today I'm going to be giving you some insider tips on how to find craft fairs, vendor markets within your area. So whether you're a seasoned seller or you're just starting out, finding the right craft fairs for you can be life-changing for your business or just for you personally. I mean, they're a lot of fun and they give you something to do and something to look forward to. Some vendor events are going to be better for some things and others for other things. And it really just depends on what you sell. And I'm gonna talk about how you can make sure that you are applying and selling at the right market for whatever your niche is. Through my research, I found a couple issues that people tend to have when it comes to finding craft fairs. It's either that there are too many and they don't know how to narrow it down or they don't know how to find craft fairs in their area at all or they live in a small town and therefore there might only be one big craft fair a year. So I'm gonna talk about how to navigate all of this. So first I'm gonna talk about how you can go about locating these events. So one of the biggest things that I feel like people miss is that they don't realize how beneficial Facebook groups can be and they don't even know that these Facebook groups exist. First, what I want you to do is I want you to write down your city name, the cities surrounding you, and all the cities that you are willing to travel to, like the, the distance you are willing to travel to, to um, bend. So if you're willing to travel an hour, whatever cities are an hour away, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a major city, let's just say Philadelphia. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in Philadelphia vendor events, and we're going to see what comes up. I'm going to type in Philadelphia vendor events. Hey, this is Alexia from the future. And I just wanted to say, you can also type things in like Philadelphia craft fairs, Philadelphia markets, and other variations of those types of things. Um, your best bet is to just click on groups because that's what I'm talking about right now. But you can also click on the, um, the events and it'll just list certain events that are already that, that have already been posted on Facebook. But let's focus on one thing at a time here. So if you go into the groups, um, you're going to find a group for one of these cities that are around you that have a community of people who vend and who share different markets and places to go to and who people who are having these vendor events, they go onto these pages and let, let um, other vendors know that they are going to require or that they are going to need vendors for a certain event. If I go under the groups here, okay, so for Philadelphia, I found Philadelphia vendors and events, uh, Philadelphia vendors and events. So the one that has 9.7K members, that's typically the one that I would go for. I go for the ones that have the most members just because they're gonna have the most posts and um, that's likely where the most information is going to be given. So then I have um, PA and local craft vendors and events. Um, Philadelphia craft fair and flea market call for artists and vendors. As you can see, this is what I'm talking about. So um, there are a bunch of different groups for different cities and locations that are specifically made for you to be able to find these types of events. So make sure that you answer the questions um, when the group it typically you click on it and then it populates and it'll have questions for you to answer to make sure that you get approved to the group. Now, your small little tiny town might not have a specific group, but the surrounding ones and the closest big one might. And see mine here, it'll have like, it has like all the surrounding counties. So they have one whole group for that. Um, so yeah, I just feel like that's one of like the best ways. It's probably like the number one way that you can find um, these types of events. Also, you go onto Facebook and then you type in your location and events, or you go under the events and you look at locations near me and you can set out um, the, the distance and the, the dates and all this kind of stuff. And then you can find events that way. So that's another way um, to find them. So the third way is to just go on Google and type in again, events near me um and sometimes people don't post their events on facebook maybe they don't use facebook it's it's typically all the big stuff is all on facebook but if it's just something like maybe local um they might post it on like a what is it called um, eventbrite i think it's called um so 
that's another way. Now I have found that if it's on Google, it's likely on Facebook as well. Uh, Facebook's kind of like one of the main places where people go to post these types of events. Next thing I want to talk about is the importance of making sure that you research these events. There are a lot of events out there that might be legit, but then it might have people who are using their name as um, and scamming you. They're using the event's name, but they aren't actually affiliated with the event. Therefore, they are collecting vendor booth fees, but they aren't even affiliate affiliated with the event. So you want to always make sure that you are um, addressing the right contact. And a way to do this is, again, when you are part of those groups, you can be like, hey, I want to make sure that this is legit. Has anybody ever gone through and done this event or with this um, event host? So that's one way. Um, typically, then you'll have people being like, oh, no, um, that's not who usually runs that. Or I do that all the time and that person doesn't run that. Or, oh, yeah, I do this all the time and that's, that's the person to go to. Or a lot of the times they see the actual, like, event host will be like this is my event that is a scam don't you know don't go to them so it is very very important that you make sure that um there is legitimacy to the events that you sign up for because you don't want to send your money and then you just don't hear anything because it, again you don't want to get be scammed so something else is you want to see how credible these event coordinators are now, I don't want to say that if it's their first event that you just don't want to do it because that doesn't mean, you know, that it won't be a complete success or, you know, that you shouldn't do it. Something that I prefer, though, is to make sure that they have done a couple of events. That's just me personally. It shows that they have some experience when it comes to um, arranging and setting up events. And you can look at their past events and see how much foot traffic they got and just see what type of advertising they did. So that's something else, else to look for. It's not like a, a done, you know, deal if somebody's doing an event for the first time. And I just think that it's helpful if they have done events before. Next is advertising. Um, you want to research and you want to ask, you can reach out to the um, event host and you can ask them how they will be advertising their event. Now. A lot of the times in the description when asking for vendors, it is something that is put in there. They will be like, oh, we will be on this radio station or we have, you know, stuff going out on this day or that day because it is something that is commonly asked. So if they don't have that there, it's not like unlike it's not unusual for you to just reach out an email. It's um, it's a common question and it is a valid question because if they are not advertising, then how are, is anybody going to know that the event exists? So um, that's something that I have noticed in the past. If I had an event where I'm like, mm, I haven't seen any ad ads for it. I've been talking to people around the town. Nobody, you know, knows it exists. I haven't heard anything on the radio. You know, I haven't done anything. It's like, okay, well, there's probably not going to be a high foot traffic there. Um, now I have been to events where I saw no advertising I thought nobody was going to show up and a lot of people showed up so it's just important though to research and to make sure that they are advertising in a way um, that's going to attract the most amount of people. Another thing is the location. I have come across a lot of events since I moved where I have moved that seem like amazing events but they are all over an hour away and I am just not ready um, to commit to something that is over an hour away. I have a three-year-old and it's just, it's just a lot. So always look to see how far away these events are because somebody might be posting in a local page um, for like a small town that you're in and it might be a city that's like an hour in some way. And I mean, maybe that's, maybe that's all that you have and maybe that's something that you have to um, think about when it comes to yourself and your finances and your gas. It's silly to say that I don't like big crowds. I think that big crowds are a little bit scary um, these days, but it's silly to say that when you want the most foot traffic to an area, I guess really always be aware of your surroundings, of course, but I think that it is important to not uh, put yourself in a bad area if you are uncomfortable about where it is being held. Um, you know, you can do your research and, and see what streets it's on, what, you know, 
type of city it is, just I think it's very important to just make sure that your safety comes first and that you don't want to be in an area that um, could put you at risk. Next is the booth fee. Um, there was an event that I was going to apply for that is in Nashville and I was like, oh my gosh, this would be awesome. It's multiple days and it didn't even dawn on me um, and I should have known better. Um, but I was thinking in my head, like, as I'm doing it, I'm like, oh, you know, it's a few days. Okay. It's probably going to be like a couple hundred bucks. It is $1,200. <laughs> and honestly, it depends on what you are selling, but that is not, you know, that might not be bad. Typically the, the vendor events that cost more is because they intend to have a higher amount of foot traffic and they plan to have more amenities and more things for people to do. So they expect more people to show up and for you to make your money back. I have gone to markets. I did a market every single month that was $20 a month. And I made, you know, there was a lot of people there. It just depends. Um, it just really depends. A good thing to do is to look at past events that these, um, like sometimes it'll be like, oh, the fourth annual St. Patty's Day Festival or something like that. So you wanna look back at their past events. A lot of the times they're still up on Facebook and it'll be like, you know, the third annual St. Patty's Day Festival. And it'll show how many people were interested in it and how many people clicked going. Now that is not a good indicator of anything. I think it helps to be like, okay, maybe this amount of people are likely gonna show up, but there's also a lot of people who do not click interested going or anything like that on Facebook. But you can see pictures from the past, um, you know, events. You can look under hashtags and see if there was any pictures of like the street during these events and you can see how many people actually showed up you can also ask around especially in those types of vendor groups you can ask okay hey did anybody do this this um this festival last year can you tell me um how was the foot traffic how you know how much you know did you make your your vendor feedback and a lot of people i mean again people ask these questions all the time it's not abnormal and um, you should be able to get some type of feedback. So next I wanna talk about is why it is important that you act fast when it comes to these types of things, because say that you really want to do something during Christmas. Now that's a time when everybody wants to do something during Christmas when it comes to, you know, vending. That's when people typically get the most sales. So it's gonna be, you know, October, November, December, even Halloween, Halloween in October and September, those markets are typically um, very sought out for as well. Uh, you have Mother's Day, you have um, 4th of July, you just have um, markets that surround certain holidays where people are going to want to go out and to, you know, go to markets and especially during Christmas time buy gifts. So something that tends to happen is these events that have high foot traffic that are like the biggest Christmas event within your area, um, however, you know, far you have to go, they sell out probably the, the same day that they open up vendor spots. People are waiting. People who have done this event before, they're waiting. They're waiting for those spots. So it is extremely important to act as quickly as you can um, and do not wait. You're not going to be able to get into um, a very high traffic, you know, well-known Christmas market come October, November. It's just not gonna happen. You just, it, it won't happen because they are, all the spots are filled. Now you might be able to get on a wait list and, you know, potentially, but it is very unlikely. So as I'm telling you this right now, look for Christmas markets, look for, you know, things, just look for stuff that's throughout the whole entire year. Set yourself up with a calendar um, and write down different markets uh, for different times that you apply to and you get accepted to. So again, you need to act fast. Do not wait. People are on January 1st, they're sitting there and they're like, all right, let me fill up my calendar with all these vendor events. So it helps people know how much inventory they have to create and make and people who've done these events in the past, they ain't messing around. They're like, I am, I am, I wrote down when they plan to open up these vendor applications and I'm going to make sure that I snag my spot. Something that can be a good thing or a bad thing, um, depending on which side you are on, is um, if a event is juried. And the good side about that is that if it's juried, they only pick certain, um, certain amounts of each type of niche so i crochet so they might only pick um you know say they pick two crochet you know booths that's all that they are, are have open so 
they might have a bunch of other vendor spots open, but they don't have any many spots open for crochet because they make sure that they have a wide a range of things and they don't want, you know, um, they don't want there to be half of crochet, you know, people there and then nobody else gets spots. So they just want to make sure that they have a big variety. Now, um, that's a good thing if you have already been accepted to the craft fair because then you know that you're not going to have um, crazy competition when it comes to your niche and um, some events that are not juried, you you go and you're like, wow, there are like five other crochet, you know, crocheters here who sell plushies and it's like, well now it just kind of dilutes like all of us. Like it's like, okay, well, they're looking around and they're seeing all these plushies. It's like, it doesn't, it doesn't make like my craft um, seem as rare and special because there are four other people doing it and same to them. And um, also they might just go buy from whoever is cheaper. And it's like, you know, it's just, it's not a good time. It's not a good time. So it's a good thing if you are already accepted. Now, if you are not accepted, it can be a bad thing because like I said, if they already have that spot taken for whatever your niche is, you ain't getting in. So um, good thing for them to be that way. Bad thing if you wait too long and your spot is taken. Now, I know a lot of people feel some type of way about when it comes to their inventory and it really just depends on what you create and how fast you can create things. So speaking from my point of view, when it comes to crocheting items, sometimes they can take a long time. And as of right now, I have very limited inventory. So if I was to see that a um, market was opening up, you know, that this popped up is gonna be next week, I don't think it's very smart to take that market unless you do not have a, um, a full-time job or you know you don't have kids and I don't know you might just be like a college student who's off for spring break at the time or something I don't know and you might be able to just sit there and crochet non-stop but if you're not one of those people you do not want to go to a big event where you spend um, like a hundred dollars for a vendor fee when you only have like $200 worth of inventory. It's just not something that you want to do. It is a waste of time and you might as well just wait to continue to build up your inventory and do a market later. For events that are back to back, that can be a little, you know, a little much sometimes because if you sell out at one market, um, because they are really hit or miss, sometimes you might go and you might sell nothing. Sometimes you might go and you might sell everything. You really just don't know and so if you schedule them back to back um, and you have like two days or you have one day where you schedule like a Saturday and then a separate market for a Sunday you are it is risky you are risking a lot because you might have to cancel then on that second market if you do not have enough stuff left over and it's just kind of unfortunate um, because then somebody else could have taken that spot um, so either leave some inventory at home I don't know but it's just be very, very smart with how you apply for these events. Don't just apply for as many as you possibly can. Um, it's just not, it's not the best idea for you and your business. So when you go to these pages and you find these events, um, there's typically always a way to contact and to apply. Um, typically the applications are online. They might be on their website. They might say, hey, um, you know, email me and one thing that seems to be very common is if you are a new vendor to this to a certain market they are going to want photos of whatever you sell so in order to get into that market you're you need to take some good photos you need to take some good photos of your items um try to set them up on a table try to set them up in like a way where you know it looks like you are already you know it's already at the event you want to hold on to, to some of these pictures to be able to send so they can see that you are legit that you Will likely have enough inventory um even if they're old photos uh, and you don't have that inventory anymore you just need to make sure that you are sending them good photos so that's something that you need to think about right now and make sure that you have them because it is honestly very rare that i have never been asked for photos of what i sell and then yes you know then you go through the application process and you do all that different ones have different terms and conditions and certain things that you have to have um i know that certain uh, certain states and certain counties you need to have different types of permits and stuff again if you are in a vendor group for that 
area, they are likely going to have all the answers when it comes to that. Um, so you will be good. The, the groups on Facebook are so beneficial and so helpful. Also, something that I want to mention is to think about what your target audience is. Now, I sell crochet plushies, so 